A record number of Americans left the workforce in August of this year, creating labor shortages and leaving economic officials pondering what was the cause and how do we salvage this? Now, your side digital reporter Emily Severich joins us now with more. Emily. Yeah, Ken, I spoke with local experts, and they tell me it's a facet of contributing factors. It's happening across the country, and they tell me in my special report, The Great Resignation, what is contributing? If companies have actually been actively kind of monitoring the wellness of their workforce and kind of gauging the engagement of their workforce, it shouldn't be a surprise to them as well. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, a historic 4.3 million Americans left their jobs in August. In North Carolina, the labor force has lost about 90,000 workers. Economists have coined the term the Great Resignation to describe this ongoing phenomenon. I asked Dr. Cody Chellen, associate professor in the College of Business at ECU, why are people leaving? What's the reason? He says the pandemic has made workers reevaluate what they're getting out of their jobs. The pandemic has basically provided for a perfect cocktail of burnout. I think for people, they're trying to reassess priorities. So a lot of people are at home, and for people, they've given a lot of time to companies. They've been with an organization for many years. They feel like they've been loyal, and then they're hearing all these things about reduced hours, furloughs, layoffs, and they think, well, maybe, maybe it's time for me to kind of reconsider my, my path. Dr. Mike Walden, an economist from NC State, says he's calling it the great reallocation. He says many workers are using this time to up their workforce skill set for better future job opportunities. People did have a, 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 a you know, financial support. And what we think has happened is a lot of folks said to themselves, I'm going to upskill during this, this layoff. I'm going to learn coding. I'm going to uh, take some courses. I'm going to finish up my degree that I didn't get it. So when the economy comes back, I'm able to move up the, the ladder, the, up the economic ladder. But it's more than just about getting extra pay and benefits. Workers shouldn't have to make a choice between good pay and their mental health. We still have people afraid of COVID. We have families with children who are having lots of trouble finding daycare centers. Uh, who may be worried about school schedules. And while they're hearing all these things about possibly losing their job, they're not hearing at the same time any kind of support from their organization. Dr. Chalin and Dr. Walden agree. They say it's up to companies and businesses to create accommodations that allow their organization to continue to operate successfully with the care of employees in mind. I think a lot of them have, quite frankly, been surprised. They thought as soon as the pandemic eased down, they were going to go back to where we were pre-pandemic, and that's not been the case. So it's really put the worker in the driver's seat. You want to create a want-to type of environment. And that's where organizations need to focus their efforts. Signs of employee burnout include tardiness, extended breaks, and psychological withdrawal, like not paying attention in meetings. Those can be warning signs that somebody is indeed burned out. The professors say the more companies can proactively manage that before it happens, the more successful of a turnover rate there will be. I'm Emily Severage, 9 on your side.